Hello, welcome to Ohanga. My name is Yu Ping. Today, I will be visiting Amy. Amy is an abstract painter, poet, and jewelry designer. Amy travels throughout the United States for inspiring glimpses of oceans and deserts. She just recently came back to New England. Okay, let's get started. Amy, thanks for having us here. I really love your workspace here. How do you like it? You like it so now that I have this large space and getting some lights and everything. It's just, it's, I don't know if it's easy. <laughs> I'm like, wow, I never thought I'd be this. So, yeah. I, um, I have, have a hundreds more coming out. So. Before I had like a quarter of that rug, we brought that blue rug. I, it's paint on it because I paint right on the rug usually. <laughs> so, um, and the RV too, it, it was really hard to, it was a really small space, you know? So now I have this big room and my husband's been very much like, so we used to start living room. He's like, go ahead, make it your art studio. So oh, <laughs> I'm nice. putting some track lighting and stuff in here, you know? That's really nice. But yeah, I'm really grateful to have all this space. Is, so these kind of small paintings were kind of sort of, did you start it? Partially because the small studio space you um, had. Yeah, I yeah I just got this the for that purpose. I didn't seem to be able to just stay with the small paintings. So even with that, I always like to paint big, but also um, so the people could afford an original piece um, that costs a little less. But it's interesting with it. I mean, the materials obviously cost less, but sometimes, as I said, you spend as much time <laughs> on the little details. And, and if you and if you're if I'm painting small and I'm just doing that for a large span of time, it can be kind of hard to switch back over to a larger canvas. I notice it takes um, practice to do that to be able to switch because you're in such a small space and then you just expand. You know, it can be so either like paint small and do cards for a while in boxes, or do a span of really large ones. So that's sort of yeah. That's great. Okay. This piece is titled Coyote Moon, and there's a lot of uh, details here. Um, whenever I title something, it's, it's, it comes to me as I, I don't actually plan it out. So sitting down and saying, okay, this one's Coyote Moon. So I paint the piece, and then it tells me the title. I don't, that's the only way that I can describe it. It comes to me intuitively. So this is a really nice piece because it's actually a little canvas and I love these little <coughs> mini canvas. <coughs> An intuitive process that it is a that's challenging to me. I don't that's one of the most challenging parts about it is actually describing why it is what it is. It's, it's, it speaks for itself, I feel. I think that's Probably the best way I can describe that or articulate that. Wait for cheese. <laughs> Fish, no barking at him. Fish. She's very uh, photogenic. She's always right there. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. She, and she just she doesn't get like a into your pain. No, no. And I and she really does look at them sometimes. She really does. She does actually gaze upon them. Like I think I'm um, the colors or something. She. What is this painting called? Uh, this is uh, Forest Frequencies, and it's inspired by my connection to nature and going out into nature. Like uh, when I was hiking one day um, and just experiencing the frequency of nature and the, the forest specifically, and the energy of. The feeling of oneness with the forest, and um, so sort of like a, my translation of it as the the energy you feel specifically to to the ferns in the forest. I have a really close relationship to ferns, but just the whole forest as a one, um, like a in a almost like an orchestra of um, frequencies of energy that well if. Because of the, this piece, it's not like it's specifically um, that they're, the plants are in a specific spot. It's just kind of like the, they're all together. It's, their, it's more of their energy, like their aura 
of the forest. Like I remember being in the forest and just experiencing that. I'm actually taking a photograph that day and seeing just all of them having this glow around them, like an aura. So um, it's not like they're specifically in a spot on the painting. Um, it's more of they're just kind of um, energy of all of the different plants in the tree and like the flow of energy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think that one is sort of for that one is it is almost like the eye, the oneness in the forest. But like the upper one with the circular is close to. I put spirals in my work a lot because everything is connected and spirals back in the circle. You know, mm -hmm. so I, I do include that a lot because I see there's so many spirals in nature. So that's when I first started. Um, there's one in the upper right too. Yeah, I started putting a lot of spirals in because I was seeing them all over, you know, even the fern. I guess you could say that would be where the fern is because when the ferns first come, you know, the babies, they have the spiral, it's, you know, and I love that. <laughs> Sorry, just, I don't know, everywhere I look in nature, I see that. You use the word frequency and I, you can, I know you had the, even taught like healing kind of. Mm -hmm. Thing, um, right, yeah, 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 exactly. So, is that a kind of a word you use to um, describe? The yeah, I, I mean, I, I think I learned a lot of it around that time period where I was sort of absorbing the information all around me about energies and frequency, and then just the idea. But it always made sense to me since I was young, even that, and just seeing. I don't specifically see people's auras, but I can kind of sense that around them, their, their energy, you know. So. I think that's how I, I sort of channel that into my, my work. So you can see us uh, and you can tell we are nice person. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> oh, we are nice <laughs> So you start this painting after you came back to? Yes, I did this um, in this room actually, um, here uh, about, I think about a month ago, I completed it. Yeah. So. So is this so a forest that you went to, also local here? Um, it, yes, it's in um, Valentown, Connecticut. Um, it's uh, called Green Falls. Beautiful forest. <laughs> What's the name of this painting? This painting is titled Ascension. How long have you had that painting? Approximately mm, at least 12 years old. But I had it framed professionally in Pennsylvania. And um, this was the time period that I was really studying um, a lot about Reiki and spirituality. And, um, and I was reading a lot about the ascension process, it's sort of like the um, enlightenment and, and you know that sort of thing. But for me now, I think what it means to me now is a little bit different than when I painted it, but it still is, it really is one of my favorite pieces. But um, I guess even though I would put it in the spirit collection, it does sort of have like a, a water element to it. But it's 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 really about you know just um, that like ascension of our souls and um, connection to God. And what do you call that that painting? Um, okay, this one is uh, Winter Moon, and this is actually a print. I have the original right over here if you want to see it. Yeah, I, um, I actually did this one for my husband as a gift, and it was so popular that I've been making and selling prints of it. But this is Winter Moon. It's um, actually done with watercolor and acrylic, so it's mixed media on um, watercolor paper. And I think I did this for my husband about two years ago for a Christmas present. It's really nice. So, um, kind of what gave you the inspiration for this one? Um, I remember it was um, going outside in my yard when I was in Pennsylvania and just seeing the moon above the trees and that, you know, the beautiful, I think it was, I think it was in the beginning of December because I know I did it for him for Christmas and just that, you know, that crisp, Winter night, quiet. <laughs> but I, I'm not sure exactly what the name of the moon was, but I was very inspired by it. But I'm just more of a private, like I don't normally, you know, do art in front of people. I have to practice that, I guess. <laughs>
or something. But I always paint all of the sides and the bottom, and I, I know that not all artists do that, but I try to paint it so that it, it frames the piece, you know? So if some, and these are gallery wrap canvas, so um, they can be framed if someone really wants to, but um, that way they don't have to actually, you know, go out and, and purchase a frame for it because there's already with color that matches the piece. I pair them up. I, I don't do it, it's it's something like I paint them and then they find their the jewelry that goes with them. <laughs> and this is a necklace I made in an earring set. This one has um, check glass and lapis. And then I sign the box and put a glaze on it so they get a piece of art with their jewelry. <laughs> yeah, that's, so that's cool. really nice. This one I actually really like a lot because it reminds me of that Mind of the Forest painting that I did. And this one has a um, jasper and check glass and a shell that goes with it. It kind of matches it, see? <laughs> the colors match a little. So then they just find their, <laughs> their partner. Yeah, people really seem to like the hand-painted box, you know, if they if they can't afford to buy a piece of art and, and some jewelry, then they have the art with them. Well, I think they got a really good deal. How long does it usually take you to finish a painting? Um, yeah, so uh, for a large painting, um, it actually, it could take, you know, weeks to months, like, it, as it develops. Usually it's a, it's a quicker thing for me because I just will work on it continuously. So maybe like a painting, like a 30 by 40, I would say, um, at least a week. But it's interesting because some of the, the smaller pieces, can because they're so detail-oriented, can take... It almost feels like it's more painful to print, you know, the smaller pieces on the smaller scale. So the watercolor cards, too, like I, I end up uh, framing these for, for watercolor cards because um, the response was so amazing. I'm like, there's just watercolor, you know what I mean? Like, it just, it's funny the way people, they uh, respond to that. But, yeah, it, it's really hard to actually say. A small piece can sometimes take as long, maybe even longer than a larger piece. <laughs> do, do painting more than the other time? Because any time that, yeah, the inspiration comes and I have the time to sit, I mean, have some time. But there's been times where it, it's interesting where I have a very small amount of time to fit that in. And I just have to get that down. You know, like if, if you're a writer, you just have to write it down before you lose that. Or even if you just start that, you know, and you have it on the canvas a little bit, it's almost like once you do a few of the lines of brush strokes, it's kind of, you're locked into it now. So you can go back to it. But I, I tend to try to have a span of time where I can get a large amount done in one time. Like, so I didn't just, I have had pieces, I do have a piece called Genesis that took me about three months to complete. So it's interesting because it, to me, it, it, it came to these different parts of my life over a three month span where when I look at it, you can really see that for me anyway. Whereas it, it almost feels like it's less complete to me that way. So I'd like to just finish it. That's great. Okay. Family is um, they're all artists, photographers, musicians, and um, with the painting though, I, I did um, always loved it, you know, even when I was really young. But um, I think it was in my story too. I talked about how my brothers and they were really good, like realists. You know, they could draw really well, and we would have like these competitions, and I, I would say, oh, I'm not that, and I would go into creative writing instead, thinking I'm not that good at this. Although I always loved it, always very creative. And then I was, um, I joined that uh, goddess class where we did, we studied the archetypes of a goddess and we did the self-portrait and I remember um, the person that was instructing was, she wasn't um, teaching us painting, she was just saying like, you know, we're going to, we're just going to all do self-portraits and so I remember saying, oh no, I don't, you know, I don't think I can really do this, you know, and she said, just going to do it and it was this connection, she said, some people just keep painting after this, other people not so much, but I just start, I couldn't stop painting after that. It's just developed from there. And then the spiritual side of it, um, my whole family is really, we're all very spiritual and have this like very heightened sense of intuition. And I don't know how to really describe that part, but I, I had gone into 
um, doing Reiki and was a Reiki master and was teaching that. But I found um, I, I didn't really, I didn't really want to keep continuing that. And I, I thought there was something not above it, but just more. I kind of I returned to um, Christian, being a Christian again. And in my background, um, my whole family is um, Catholic, and there's so many like mystical traditions in that. And I, I kind of returned more to that and left Reiki and, and thought because I felt like I don't really think this is what I'm supposed to do, right? Even though I, I thought I was helping people with Reiki and I saw results with it, I thought there's something else that I'm supposed to be doing to heal people that's, I don't need the system of Reiki. Um, and I was teaching people the symbols and, you know, this is how you do it. But then I realized like we we're just born healers and we have to find that way that heals people. And I realized it was my art. So then I started going full force into that. And that's really opened up the art even more for me. Like once I left Reiki, it just even opened up even more. I was like, yeah, we're just been waiting for you to just focus on this, you know, and then adding in jewelry and, you know, photography, but mostly I just wanted to focus on the painting. Um, I guess that's the best way I can describe it, if that makes sense. So when you start painting something, do you have in your mind, this is something that will go to someone else and help them kind of heal, help them connect with nature. Is that kind of, does yeah. it come to your mind or you are mostly focused on saying, okay, I'm I painting. <laughs> I think I, I mostly am focused on the painting um, with the idea of, I, I'm just, it's almost like it's healing me at that point. You know, I, I'm connected to it, I'm engaged with it. And then almost like you have to heal yourself before you heal the other person and then when it's finished it's like now it's for you or you whoever needs that painting you know and it's interesting because it, even with the jewelry too I've noticed that that's that's another interesting part is like somebody will you know at a show they go put the bracelet on or whatever and even that seems to have a healing component because it just fits them and you see them light up you know but with the artwork I feel like I, I'm just a little bit closer to the painting than I am to making jewelry but with the artwork you really notice that with people it's just it just changes their whole, you know, and, and I mean, I don't, I don't feel like I'm responsible for it. I feel like I'm just the channel, you know? Yeah, I do get that comment a lot though. Like, oh, I'm not really into art. And all of a sudden they're just like, oh, but I like that. I, it's, I'm like, wow, that's so neat. Like, you just, <laughs> yeah. And children, and children do, they like, they're coming to the booth. Oh, and I'm like, that's like the biggest compliment to me because a child, like, you know, is so, they like the colors. <laughs> Yeah, but like I said, like, that's the biggest thing is that when somebody comes to you and says, I'm not really an art person, but I enjoy, you know, I feel drawn to that or whatever, then I realize it's, that is it. Like it has this healing energy, this component. And that's really, what if I refer to myself as a healer? Because I, I, I used to more than I do now. It's because it's, it's almost like, you know, it sounds like an ego thing, you know, not, but I know that it's my job to help people to heal in some way. And I, and I'm just grateful that I finally found that instead of, you know, feeling that kind of like, you know, I, I, it's okay what I'm doing, but I'm not really, something's missing, you know? And so this is what was missing. <laughs> One last question. Do you sometimes uh, get the inspiration and just stop everything that's going on and stop painting? Do you have that kind of experience? Yeah, there are times when I, um, I mean, I'm getting really, <laughs> the funny part is, is that when I'm getting really busy, um, getting prepared for a show, like the last show that I was doing, and I'm not able to actually paint, but I'm preparing the paintings and preparing for the show, it's so draining. It's like, oh my gosh, I, I like taking all my artwork out, but packing it and stuff, you know, that's the hard part, you know, but once you get to the show and then you interact with the people, that's the beautiful part. But taking, anything taking you away from it, like being really, you know, busy with life or whatever the thing might be, um, or whatever, and you feel that, you know, you just, you can't get back to it. Sometimes if that happens to me, like when I was in the process of moving, the best thing I can do is, you know, go out in nature and take photography if I'm able to actually get to the easel or um, do something like with my plants, like repot or working with my plants, and that will help that part of me but yeah I really have to do something that grounds me in that and put this work grounds me the most there has to be times when I have to be away from it like in the move here that was hard <laughs> like putting all the paints away you know <laughs> I have to wait to the last minute to put the paints away and then 
it's just, it's always, it's painful almost, you know, not to be able to just get to, and I usually on a regular basis, every day I paint, if I can, I, even if it's something small, and um, it's really a meditation too for me, you know, a spiritual practice, so if a long time goes by, I don't feel completely myself. Thanks again for having us here, Amy. Last time we interviewed Amy, she told us, it is my duty to listen, understand, and express the peace and tranquility needed at any given moment in life, to gently urge viewers to reflect inward. I hope I can do the same for you. Okay, everyone, thanks for joining us today. See you next time.